Hello everyone, good afternoon. Good afternoon from Brussels. Welcome to the second live event of the Active Learning and Innovative Teaching in Flexible Learning Spaces MOOC offered by the European Schoolnet Academy and the Novigado. My name is Alexandra Albanido and I'm the course designer and course moderator. Today, luckily, I'm not alone in this event. I have eight wonderful speakers, eight participants of the course that uh, were willing to share their active learning uh, experiences, activities and learning scenarios with us. Together with me, I have em Emma Abati, Cora Sohart, Petro Pereira, Katerina Glezu, Dilek Telioglu, Maria Gorina, Cristina de Vega Benavides and Patricia Roba. So, the purpose of this event, as you might... I'm sorry, but you have to mute yourselves. Uh, please mute your microphones if you are not taking part in this Teach Meet. Uh, as I was saying, the Teach Meet, the purpose of this event, the Teach Meet, uh, is to inspire you, to give you some more ideas about active learning, to give you the opportunity to network, share, discuss ideas. The session is uh, recorded. Please note that the, the session is recorded and the recording will be available on the live event page of the MOOC. Before I give the floor to our participants, I would kindly like to remind you uh, that the course deadline is Wednesday, the 23rd of February, uh, just before midnight. Uh, if you are facing any technical issues regarding the online scenario tool, please email your issues on the scenario tool support. And if you have any uh, questions or uh, peer review issues, please report your problem in the Academy support on the email that is provided on this slide. Also, please keep in mind that in order for you to complete the course successfully, you need to, um, to complete the three steps of peer assessment, the peer review activity at the very end. And these steps are firstly to upload your learning scenario, secondly to review the work of three of your peers, and thirdly to receive feedback from your peers. There are no other mandatory activities in the course, just the final peer review activity. So please uh, keep in mind that at the very end of this presentation, we will uh, devote some time if you have any question regarding the course, but also for sure we will uh, have a Q&A &A, a &A question for our speakers. So I, without further delay, I would like to give the floor to our first uh, speaker. This is Emma Abati. Hello, Emma. And, Hello. Uh, her presentation will focus on how to adapt our class in an artificial intelligence lab. Emma, the floor is yours. Thank you, Alexandra. Yes, my name is Emma. I come from Italy. I'm a secondary teacher in Latin geography and history, and my school is Liceo Scientifico Armando Diaz from Caserta. Uh, we can go on with the next uh, slide. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, at the center of uh, this presentation, there is, of course, the, the theme of our MOOC, Active Learning. Uh, the pedagogy that is uh, was used for this learning scenario is uh, project-based learning, and the technology that we are going to analyze is uh, how to generate, how to create uh, a chatbot with a very simple, a very intuitive uh, platform uh, for the to chatbot generator. And uh, the space that was used for this le learning scenario is uh, the lab room uh, that I uh, renominated the bat cave. And after uh, you will understand why. The driving question that uh, we guide all these uh, learning scenario and uh, the learning approach approach is uh, how a chatbot could help uh, your classmates uh, uh, to understand uh, a particularly difficult topic uh, in the classroom. In my case, it was a Latin, was a Cicero, that is a, a Latin orator, but we ca you can adapt to your classroom uh, to each subject uh, and topic uh, of your uh, uh, curriculum and uh, uh, syllabus. Thank you. We can go on with the next slide. Uh, so the tool that uh, was used to generate the, uh, the chatbot, just to, to let you know, chatbot is um, a, a bot, a robot, uh, is a form of artificial intelligence, is a conversational, conversion, conversational oh, okay, is an agent that uh, uh, imitates uh, conversation like in the real life. Uh, it's the one uh, chatbot that we uh, meet when we, for example, uh, as a client, as a customs, uh, 
we have to to book uh, uh, a travel with a company. For example, example of chatbot is uh, Alexa or Siri. Um, so they imitate uh, um, a converse, a human conversation, even though they are not humans, of course, but they are softwares. In this case, the tool used was Landbot.io. Uh, in the first part of the learning scenario, uh, there is the uh, uh, the approach is a teacher led because uh, we have the uh, learning uh, campfire space. Uh, the teacher gives instructions and guidelines uh, on how to realize and create the chatbot to the students, uh, for example, using a tutorial or creating a PowerPoint presentation to give them the instruction in order to realize the chatbot. Uh, we can go over for the for the next uh, um, for the next slide. Um, of course, I'm using the terms that uh, Professor David Thornberg used uh, to design the learning spaces. And the campfire is the place where the guru, where the um, the, the, the the teacher usually in the classroom uh, share his expertise uh, expertise with the, the students. So uh, is a, a moment to share the knowledge. The next step of the learning scenario is for independent learning. Is the social learning uh, where when uh, students collaborate is the collaboration space, uh, the watering hole, uh, in which uh, uh, students uh, collect and gather the ideas to realize the chatbots. It's a very important moment because uh, they are free to, uh, to to chat each other, to exchange uh, opinions, and to ask the help for, of the teacher if they need. The, the teacher is a sort of facilitator. Um, so we can go home uh, with the next chat. I also uh, put, uh, for, for example, a very easy uh, brainstorm uh, tool that is Miro, uh, because it's important to say that uh, those learning spaces are not just uh, uh, tangible learning spaces, but uh, can be also virtual learning spaces. Um, the next uh, step is another, is a water, watering hole too. Why watering hole? Because uh, the people are like uh, animal, uh, all the students are like uh, animals ar around the watering hole, so they uh, talk together and uh, they are free to uh, to to, uh, to arrange a solution for a problem. Uh, in this uh, second part, uh, students collect uh, the the information that they need to to build the chatbot. Uh, I remember I remind that the initial question is how to help uh, your friends, your schoolmates that are in problem with uh, a subject topic. So they collect uh, the 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 conversation that the chatbot will have with the students uh, in uh, in uh, in problem that are that has been uh, to be helped. Uh, the next slide. Thank you so much. Oh, so we have uh, uh, in a important part of the learning process that is uh, uh, co-led by Professor uh, David Torben as uh, the uh, cave learning space. Um, higher nominated it the Bat Cave, uh, the, the acronym is Bat Cave. Uh, okay, yes, uh, the link is with the, the Batman Cave, of course. But here in this case, Bat, uh, in my opinion, could be also interpreted like uh, um, bring uh, a toy for the elementary schools because uh, uh, this uh, uh, chatbot uh, uh, generator is very easy to use. Uh, uh, also, the uh, students in the elementary schools can uh, use it with the help of the teacher. Uh, and, uh, and in the secondary level, bring a talisman. A talisman is an object that uh, brings luck and something that feel uh, that make us feel uh, very safe uh, and a comfortable place. Uh, why I, I write this? Because in my opinion to have a, a place for reflection also at school, there is no need to have very expensive furniture, uh, for example, lots of uh, computer uh, chairs and so on. Uh, sometimes it's just um, enough to have something that uh, uh, like, uh, make us feel at home uh, for, uh, for students, a toy, and uh, for the older students, uh, a talisman, an item that is a particular meaning for them. In this moment, uh, students reflect on how to realize the chatbot is a moment for reflection and for cognitive is a cognitive moment very important for the uh, for the uh, learning process at in the last part of the uh, learning scenario uh, the so-called life uh, learning space a student can share what they've created on landbot.io um, through uh, social channels because landbot is connected to um, to 
uh, WhatsApp and to Facebook. So uh, the students can um, share uh, with a, a link the chatbot they realized and uh, all the community can give a feedback about this chatbot. So it was uh, um, in this moment, uh, the life moment, uh, the task uh, is connected to real life because they realize something that can help uh, their classmates, their peers, and uh, this uh, this is uh, very easy for them because I repeat, uh, landbot.io is free. Is uh, free. Uh, there is also uh, a, a a premium version, but the free version uh, with the free version is possible to realize a very well done chatbot, and uh, you can start from scratch, but you also have some templates to use. No one line of coding. Uh, no need to have a previous experience. It's very easy to use. Just a drag and drop interface. It's a visual interface uh, to uh, to build to generate a chatbot. Uh, this was the last slide. I hope that I was clear. Even though uh, I was very fast because uh, we have the uh, time limit of five minutes, and I hope I was uh, I was okay. No worries, Emma, you respected the time. Also, thank you very, very much for your very interesting presentation. Um, I already have some questions in mind uh, that we will address at the very end. I will also encourage the participants to uh, type their questions on the chat box uh, for every speaker. Also, comments, every feedback is uh, very, very welcome. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to our next speaker, who is um, who is Cora Schohart, and she is going to to share with us her learning scenario uh, on students' contribution to a conversation about their weekend activities. Cora, please go ahead. Yeah, greetings from Cologne in Germany, and thank you very much for having me here. And in the next minutes, I want to share a two best version of Monday morning conversations. In most German primary schools, the Monday morning conversations are held in a very old school way. And in case that these Monday morning conversations are just a German practice, we start with a brief explanation of Monday morning conversations with jelly babies on the next slide, please. Here you can see what's happening in Germany on Monday mornings. It is often seen that there is just one active speaker talking about weekend experiences and all other participants act as board listeners. So I accepted the challenge to create an alternative that integrates all students as active players all the time and especially likewise on site and at home. In addition, I was very interested in integrating my students with their different abilities. Next slide, slide please, Alexandra. Thank you. I found the matching tool with Flinger because it offers the chance to differentiate and integrate students on site and at home and gives the opportunity to provide different approaches in a very, very simple way. And in addition, there is always the possibility for instant feedback from peer to peer. For me, it was important too that it is free, Flinger is free, but please remember you just can have five sessions. Um, you can just create five sessions and I chose the wall. Uh, I had one wall, please next slide please. And I chose four different approaches for the Monday morning conversation alternative. I created four posts on the Flinger wall, and the yellow post is an instruction for keen writers with three, three advices for orthography. They were invited to write some sentences about their weekend, and because they are very keen writers, they had some advice on the orthography for making it a little bit challenging. The green instruction was for emergent writers with advice for punctuation, and they were invited to write two, one or two sentences. The purple instruction included a link to a spoken instruction with speakpipe.com for my students who have difficulties in reading. And the last one, the blue one, 
is an instruction for overcharged Monday morning persons who are not able to work properly in the morning. They had to construct a weekend scene with Lego bricks. Some children were at home and they got a link and they got the information which color they have to choose. Um, yes, what happened? What do you think? Alexandra, please, the next slide, please. Yes. Here you can see a selection of outcomes from our Flinger wall. You see the blue ones have no color because they were the Lego brick um, section. And the other ones are from the shorter sentences in purple and green and the longer sentences in yellow. I'm sorry it's in German, but you see it, it really happened. And during the activity, I could monitor the following proceedings. All students on site and at home alike could participate and contribute to the Flinger wall. All students played an active part and all different levels activated the students to collaborate and show their interesting weekend experiences. What I like best is that there is instant feedback possible and you can see on the right, uh, five students liked the a post of her, her fellow of their fellow student Maya, and um, I think it's a good possibility to freshen up the Monday morning conversation and to let everyone be active. And as I experienced, no one was bored at all. That's it. Thank you very much. It was a quick Monday morning conversation, a quick presentation, and I hope you like it. Thank you. Thank you, Cora. What an uh, interesting and inclusive activity indeed. I'm very interested to try out the tool that you suggested as well. Thank you very much for your contribution. Uh, once again, for the, particip for the participants who joined this uh, event, please uh, give us your feedback, give us your questions in the chat box. And now it's Pedro's uh, turn to take the floor. Pedro Pereira, uh, will uh, present us um, uh, will present us how learning can be done through research. Pedro, please go ahead. Hello, thank you, Alexandra. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Pedro Pereira, and I'm a natural science teacher with uh, seven graduate students aged between 12 and 15. Um, the experience that I've shared with you is related to the use of learning communities among the students in case to study the geology and geolog geology local time. Um, in this activity, the methodology of learning by research in a perspective of collaborative construction of knowledge among students was the base of the project. So the study of geological time uh, in history of the Earth is a subject that poses several challenges in itself because it's about addressing something that is very abstract to the students and they don't have any kind of reference except perhaps the existence of dinosaurs. In, this, in, in addition to these difficulties, uh, there are four challenges to the teacher. How to teach uh, this abstract issue without demotivating students, how to get students to, to listen to each other's work and retain the information, and how to actively involve these students in learning, how to include students with different abilities and interests. So, um, in, a, in order to address these challenges, we, uh, I focus uh, four ideas. The learning community, the learning by discovery, by research, the working as a group, as a team, and digital tools, the ICT tools. I think these four ideas bring us to the um, the way that we can do this as a learning community by research. So in a practical way, uh, what were the steps? We have five steps. Each, each group has to, to, um, to go along this road during three, three weeks. Each group choose the earth time that they have to choose. They have explored the guiding script. Um, this guide was a bit uh, extensive because it contains all the guidelines and deadlines that the students have to do. Um, but the students are autonomous to do the tasks, to choose the materials and the tools that they will use. 
Then the, um, the, third, uh, the third step, the building a virtual um, and um, assigning the, the tasks, sorry, assigning the tasks, the group decided uh, what they would be responsible to produce, uh, who was responsible to do the digital presentations, the videos, the QR codes, the fossils, and so on. The, the next step was construction of the digital resources. Uh, so they have made these so different uh, activities and then they have to build a virtual and a physical exposition. Why these two kinds of work? Because we have um, students that are at home, but they have to, to be in the activity also. Uh, so we use a Padlet as a resource where we put all these digital resources. But also we have used um, a corridor in our school that uh, it's, it's not used in these days to uh, build a physical exposition. In these two kinds of exposition, we we can do and can put these materials, these resources, and then they analyze analysis the resources created in community. Why in community? Um, we learn one with each other. Uh, if I could teach some something to my colleague, uh, I also will learn something with him. So these these analysis of the documents, the, the resources that are made with the tools that they choose, was great to to become more aware of what is this geological time. So the next step it will be the individual individual assessment with questions that are made by students. As you can see in the picture, uh, we have a student that is exploring the physical exposition, um, trying to answer to the three questions that a group made about this team. So it's it's a long way. Uh, we have done it these three weeks. The teacher has a role of moderator and facilitator of this, the, the activity. The, the students have to be active in this in this process. So if the students are uh, active in this process of doing this, this kind of activity, they have done the resources, they have made this, the exposition, they have explored the resources made by students, they have been assessed about the questions that the students made. We have to, to listen to the students' voice. So, and, and we have, Alexander, next slide, please. We have here some, the, the student, the voice, of some students um, to become this, ex this activity more and more and more qualified. Uh, these are some of the students' opinions during the process of evaluation, evaluation of the student, highlighting that despite being something different from what they did, they felt involved, that each one can do it at their own pace, and that learning was more significant to them just in the regular um, class. I think the, the the ability to choose the ICT tools made them um, quite enthusiastic. I I discovered some tools that they use regularly. There's something to recording the voices, um, the augmented reality tool um, to to use in the the 3D fossil that they learned that they made. I think they were quite good. I, I, I learned a lot with the students and I think they learn uh, also in, in the community. So this takes us to the, the next slide. Why a learning community? By structuring the activity in this way, students uh, uh, are allowed to work collaboratively um, with greater involvement and a greater sense of responsibility. It highlights the notion that individual knowledge shared with others helps common development. These are some of the aspects that have been verified and concretely throughout this process that I would like to share with you. It guarantees all students' involvement. There are a core responsibility for learning between students. The, the students improve their grades, as we can see, um, compared with the, a regular class where the teacher teaches and the students are just seated listening to the, the, the teacher. There are a low rate of students who didn't do the tasks. Uh, these allows peer-to-peer -peer problem solving, not only about something that they, they discover during the research, but also in the use of ICT tools, um, but also they develop social skills, the collaboration, communication between them do. So in conclusion, I felt that development of this learning community was able to generate mutual gains 
among all those who participate, not only the students, but also the teachers. Thank you. Thank you very much for this uh, inspiring presentation, Pedro. I bet the enthusiasm and the motivation of students would be would have been very, very high. Thanks a lot. Um, I would like to give the floor now to our next uh, speaker, who is Katerina Glesu, and she's going to talk about implementation of robotics and programming activities. Katerina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be among uh, the open minded teachers that love uh, their students and their uh, subjects and they want uh, to do the best uh, for a better uh, tomorrow. Uh, so uh, I'm a computer science, robotics and physics uh, teacher. Uh, I'm uh, over uh, 20 years now uh, in uh, educational uh, field. I work at the uh, Psychia Schools of Psychiku in Athens, uh, Greece. I'm a teacher and uh, a teacher, teacher trainer also. I used to work to Computer Technology Institute and I have participated uh, in a lot of uh, research uh, programs. Uh, so my presentation, please uh, the other uh, slide okay uh, as you see i choose um, for my presentation only pictures uh, because i think uh, the picture is worth uh, a thousand words uh, so uh, maybe you have some questions so i will be very happy to answer uh, your questions uh, afterwards uh, my presentation suggests that the robotics can uh, provide uh, a powerful educational vehicle uh, for guiding students toward the learning in the digital age. It aims to bring forward the basic parameters of an effective constructionist approach to foster computational thinking and creativity by engaging students in robotics and programming activities. Uh, the, I had the pleasure to give lessons to enthusiastic uh, children, students, uh, both in primary and secondary school. Uh, so, uh, the implemented activities concern introductory lessons in robotics uh, in primary school, in afternoon clubs, and also in a secondary school at uh, an optional course uh, named uh, Introduction to Educational Robotics in the framework of uh, the Culture Zone, uh, zone Experiential Actions at First Arsaikyo Junior High School of Psychiku in Athens. Uh, the activities, as you see for the uh, from the photos, uh, concern a variety of robotic systems, as Bebot, Edison, Themio, EV3, Lego Mindstorms, uh, Lego We Do One, Lego We Do Zero, uh, Two, uh, uh, 80 Mega, Arduino, etc., and also uh, alternative programming environments, as uh, Edward. Ed Scratch, Open Roberta, M Block, uh, EV3, Lego Mindstorms, etc. Please, the next uh, slide, please. Thank you. Uh, you see some uh, screenshots of uh, different uh, programming uh, environments. I will give all uh, the links uh, to connect uh, with me to uh, have uh, better communication. Uh, so, uh, I will. Um, proceed to uh, some uh, of learning objectives. Among uh, them uh, was uh, the introduction to robotics and programming, familiarization with the robotic systems, experiential exploratory learning, development of computational, algorithmic, engineering thinking, cultivating programming, cognitive and handling skills. Also, developing uh, communication collaboration skills and cultivating creativity and imagination. Uh, I will, uh, I would pass uh, to results. Uh, a combination of uh, robotics, programming and unplugged activities, I think uh, had better support student learning and development the uh, student skills as collaboration team uh, work skills, communication skills, creative uh, thinking, critical thinking and computational skills. Uh, 
uh, the students showed great interest in their interaction with the robotic systems in designing, building, programming robotic constructions, remaining active and frequently expressing enthusiasm. They demonstrated their inventiveness. Their center of interest transferred uh, easily, tracing new exploration paths. They built uh, alternative, personally and socially meaning to meaningful artifacts with different levels of detail and variations of methods. Please, the next slide. Thank you. As you see uh, here, we, uh, we can see uh, different constructions. Uh, with uh, Lego, we do two. Uh, you can see the students uh, experimenting uh, while they were uh, constructing uh, the uh, the constructions, the artifacts, and also uh, some uh, screenshots of uh, uh, the programming environment, scratch uh, in this case. Okay, please, uh, the other slide. Thank you. Uh, here uh, we can see a, a lot of uh, different aspects and uh, I would like to give uh, some uh, recommendations. Uh, the pedagogical emphasis should always be on challenging and helping students understand in depth rather than use the robotic devices and the programming environment. Encouragement is the basic uh, key. Uh, if things do not uh, work right away, the teacher should praise the class for being so persistent and choosing not to give up. The participation in educational robotics competitions often functions as a source of excitement and provides additional motivation for many students, but we have to pay attention. Non-qualification in competitions leads to a great deal of frustration among students. Cultivating the idea of the value of participation rather than focusing on victory should be a primary concern uh, of the teacher. Students need to understand the debugging process of coding and reconstruction of uh, the robotic uh, creatures. Let the students share hypotheses about what is going wrong and how to fix it. Students should always feel free to try things that the teacher knows in advance will be incorrect. Students should be introduced to the ideas of frustration and persistence and need to realize that persistence is choosing not to give up and attempting something over and over again. If students misidentify solutions, they should use the backfinding formula on their configurations repeatedly until a working run is succeeded. Helpful, helpful questions to be asked. What happened? What was supposed to happen? Did it, did it work at the first step? Did it work at the second step? Where did it go wrong? So, I don't want to take your time. I just uh, uh, could say that the research gap has to be bridged on how to promote uh, STEAM education, 21st century skills, and advanced learning via educational robotics in the real classroom settings across all disciplines and all grade levels. Uh, thank you for your attention. I wish you to have a, a good uh, time. Uh, I, my advice, code, program, create, collaborate, play and learn and have fun. I will be open to your uh, questions. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much, Katarina, for your presentation. Indeed, your the pictures you included worth a thousand words, and also the advice that you share with us in the very end, I think they will be very useful for the teachers. Thank you very much. Maybe you can share some links from your presentation to the chat or your email yes. for any possible questions, please. Yes, please. yes, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I will now pass to the uh, to the fifth speaker for today, who is Dilek Telioglu. Dilek is here with us today, and she is going to address the topic of CLIL. CLIL, um, please, Dilek, the floor is yours to tell us more about this method. Uh, Dilek, please unmute yourself so that we are able to hear you. Okay, sorry, Great. sorry. No Thank worries. you so much, Alexandra. Uh, here, all you are, all you welcome to here, and I'm very uh, glad to be here. It's a great honor. I'm an English teacher in high school in Turkey. I'm from Turkey, and uh, in a high school, I'm working. And I'm working with the teenagers. Uh, they are at the age of uh, between 14 and 19. Uh, even they are preparing for the university entrance exam, uh, but we have nine and tenth grades too. Uh, today, uh, I want to give some uh, explanations about CLIL. So, what is CLIL? Uh, let us talk, uh, think about it. So, I want to show you uh, this one. This is a simple shape. So. In what subject in school would you do origami usually? For example, math or art? Let's think about it. Do you think this would help students learn in English? Uh, so why not? Yeah, for sure we can. We can have them learn words and encourage them to explain the steps, shape of the sheep or anything else they did for their uh, upon their creativeness. So, would the origami lesson stand separate or could it be integrated into your lessons? I want to just ask you this question. This is the point because it means, uh, so what is CLIL at this point? I want to ask uh, again. So, it means you teach a subject by using English and your goal is here to talk about doing origami having all the students do the uh, origami activities, but they are concentrating more, especially doing origami, or uh, they know this, they are doing like that, but at the same time, you can also uh, open on a... Uh, could you please uh, change the slide at the same time, Alexandra? Uh, and also at the, same at the same time, you can have them uh, listen and watch from the uh, board, whiteboard. And uh, Confucius uh, has a, uh, has a sentences and has some experience in excellent uh, sentences. I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. I do and I understand. At this point, uh, CLIL, what does that mean? That content and language integrated learning, because uh, we are focusing our uh, teaching content based learning. Uh, language education is a topic which can be anything from a serious scientific topic, scientific topic or a movie or anything uh, else. For example, uh, I give uh, origami as an art to English lesson. I mean, I mean uh, we have we have we should have input, especially listening, watching, etc. We should have at the same time in our uh, at this point uh, art is the input input for example at the same time we, we, we can watch we can listen how to do uh, a sheep or uh, anything frog or anything like that we can also use uh, in all 
graders. For example, we can use uh, in primary schools too. Uh, when I was in primary school, I was working in a primary school. The, uh, we have a unit, especially for second graders, you know, fruits and vegetables. So uh, not for classical uh, methods, we had to we had to give them a concrete meaning because they are so little students, so little uh, because of the ages, we should uh, provide them to uh, turn the abstract topic to into concrete meaning. So how can we do it? We should, uh, for example, make a salad. This is a STEM activity in somehow. So uh, at this uh, at the same time, you can give them the meanings of the vegetables and they can at the same time talk about how to do a making free salad. For example, for fourth graders unit, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's about a science, uh, science unit we have. Uh, especially for the government uh, schools. At this point, uh, we have almost so many concrete, uh, so many abstract words. So we have to make uh, to make uh, concrete uh, meaning to uh, uh, turn into a concrete meaning from the abstract meaning. So uh, we have we should have them making an, uh, ex for example, a science experience. For example, uh, for. Okay, let's show Hadan Tika. Hat more for Hadan Tika. Alles Tabitoyota. Alles Tabitoyota. Anyway, let me try to unmute this participant. Yeah, to mute. Uh -huh, please, please, please. We can go ahead. Yes. So <laughs> okay, so the input is important for us uh, in Khalil because uh, uh, in Khalil we are uh, working with science teacher, math teacher, and art teacher, geography teacher. Uh, for um, at this point, students are uh, learning English unintentionally but willingly. They know uh, they uh, they didn't know they are learning English because uh, they are doing something about it. So the input should be uh, listening, watching, or doing something. Please uh, turn the slide. And uh, here uh, we can see the language teachers. Uh, also, uh, the um, examples of Khalil, but we don't need to de we don't uh, need these all these, but we should the meaningful, comprehensive, comprehensible input because uh, English learning needs acquiring, acquiring, not teaching or not learning. Uh, the students can, uh, should learn uh, unintentionally. They shouldn't know that I am in the in the English lesson. So uh, what the Khalil uh, gives us that uh, Khalil make it clear us that uh, unintentionally learning with the help of other topics. Could you please uh, next slide? Uh, OK, so we can see here my uh, project because uh, this year my, uh, I am uh, studying with the language students for 11th graders. They are uh, preparing for the university entrance exam. Uh, I want to share my project uh, activities. At this project, I want uh, I base CLIL, uh, uh, I base activities according to the CLIL. Uh, at this point, for example, you see in the first uh, here, you see in the first picture uh, the activity of doing pot from clay. The students and also the uh, here, here you can see the students are doing clay with uh, try to make a pot. At the same time, they are listening. They are listening how to make a clay to a pot. They are listening. They are watching. At the same time, they are doing. They are doing. It's an it's a STEM activity. Not uh, it is a topic of an English or something else like that. And then uh, after they make a shape, they 
uh, waited a bit and they dried like this and they uh, do some plants, uh, give some uh, soil into it. And also another activity of mine is that you know we have so many plastics in our home so uh, we should we should recycle some something so uh, i think about that uh, for clear activity we based it on a clear activity we uh, painted we turned the uh, yogurt plastics into a pot they uh, painted it and then uh, so what is English in here? What is English is here. So uh, they are presenting how they did. For example, they learn the words, plants names, soil or uh, pot, and also uh, they learn how to do it step by step. At this point, clearly is important for us because uh, the meaning is not clear uh, from concrete uh, from abstract learning to concrete learning. Uh, we should use clear. I think time is limited uh, because the time limit. I have to finish. Uh, thank you so much uh, for listening to me. It's a, a really good experience for me. Thanks. Thank you very much, Dilek, for your presentation. Indeed, very interesting uh, examples you brought up, your pictures, your method that you share with us. Thank you very much for this. If any of the participants have questions about yeah. CLIL, about uh, what Dilek uh, did yeah, with your please students, ask. please go ahead and ask her on the chat, and we will address it at the very end of this presentation. Now, our next speaker um, is Cristina. I would like to give the floor to firstly Cristina because she's teaching in a few minutes and Maria, you are uh, the next one on the list. So please, Cristina, uh, the floor is yours. You're going to present us something about uh, cooperative setup in class and we are very eager to uh, see your pictures and what you did in your class. The floor is yours. Thank you very much for having me here. And yes, I'm, I am Spanish and I teach in primary literacy, English literacy, social studies and arts. And for me, when I think of flexible learning, cooperative learning always comes to my mind. So what I think is being proactive and being cooperative helps the student to improve both their level of English, their knowledge and content when it comes to social studies or natural science or whatever subject they're studying. My presentation is also full of pictures that I'm going to describe and tell you what I do. So can you go? OK, this slide is to present you my school. Sometimes when we think of flexible learning, we think, oh, we need to go outdoors, we need to go far away. No, we just need to take advantage of what we have first. And for me, it's the building. As you can see, the way it's built, there is different terraces and a big playground that I try to use every time I can in order to put into practice all the cooperative learning ideas I've got. Can you go to the next slide? OK, I've used this picture not exactly to show cooperative learning, but to show you how my class is divided. First of all, I make sure my students are in groups and that everything is easy to reach and that they can move around. How I design my, uh, my groups, it's very different according to the project. Sometimes it's me who decides who the group is going to be, and sometimes I let the kids do it. However, I give them some requirements. For example, I always tell them each group needs to have boys and girls. It's, you need to be in a group with people you weren't there the time before, and things like that. Can you go to the next slide, please? This is flexible learning. When the tables don't just become a place for writing, but a place for cooperating. On the left hand side, the students were creating volcanoes. And on the right hand side, after we had gone through studying different types of rocks, they were using gummies, cutting the gummies and creating new rocks. Um, I love that it is hands on. And what I try to do in those type of activities is to give them a specific task to every one of them. They have roles and those roles help when it comes to cooperative learning. Can you go to the next slide, please? 
So here, I just don't use the class. In the first picture, you can see kids using the hallway. That's another place where we can use it. Sometimes we just need a bigger space uh, so kids can move around and they can work together. I just make sure they have a specific task and roles. It's just not just going outside. It's going outside for doing a job. And then on the right, you can see a picture that is very special for me. This year, I decided to have a mirror in the class. One of the things that we need to help our students on sometimes is on presentations. So the fact that they can just move in the class, go to the mirror and practice their presentation there. Sometimes it's with me, sometimes it's with another student. I just didn't have a picture with another student. Normally they have a rubric of the goals they need to meet when they're preparing a presentation in front of a mirror. That way they prepare it and once they have to do it in front of the class, they're ready because apart from preparing it, they have seen each other. And can you go to the final one? I believe there is one more or no? This is the final one, Christina. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was I, I thought I had put the picture separately. So for me, when it comes to cooperative learning, make sure our students have a role in what they're doing. So sometimes is they have to be the speaker, they have to be the secretary, they have to be the assistant. And and make sure they have roles. That way it's easier for them to work in groups. Sometimes when you work in groups, it's just like, oh, go on working groups. No, you need to give them tasks and you need to give them clear instructions. Anything can be done in a group, but not just because of the matter of working in a group. And there is a lot of routines. My advice is that you don't go crazy and use all the cooperative learning routines at once, but just go little by little. And you can follow um, Keegan's cooperative learning. They're online and they're amazing. But just choose two or three that work with your class and go ahead. Thank you very much for having me here. And sorry if I was speaking too fast, but yeah, I have a class in like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent presentation, Christina. Very nice ideas. And indeed, you brought up a very interesting um, sentence that we don't always need to reinvent the wheel. We can just think creatively and out of the box and use what we already have there. And this is what we actually addressed in the MOOC as well about furniture and about spaces. Thank you very much for your input. Thank you. Also very uh, interesting input from the um, part participants on the chat. Positive feedback. Thanks a lot. Uh, you can go to your class. Thanks. Uh, thanks Thank for you. being here. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Christina. I will. I will now go back a bit to our uh, to our next um, to our next speaker, who is Maria. Um, Maria is going to present about uh, digital storytelling, which is very, very interesting. Before you start, Maria, I would just like to uh, change the setting on my computer so that we are able to include sound for your okay, presentation. You. Okay. Yes. So, yep, we can uh, we can get it started. Thank you very much. Okay, Alexandra, thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. I am uh, Maria Gaurina from Croatia. I am physics and computer science teacher, also PhD student uh, with a focus on pair uh, physical education research. I work in technical and industrial high school, Rujara Boskovic in Croatia. And in this topic, as uh, Alexandra mentioned, I will be presenting what is dig digital storytelling, why and how to be used in form of active learning. Uh, Alexandra, please, next slide. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, I I will speak about digital storytelling and you and using silent videos as an active learning method. Uh, digital storytelling at its most basic core is the practice of using computer-based uh, tools to tell stories, and it is um, always focused on uh, language language classes. And I am from science. And I need I needed to find a way to implement it in my classes. So uh, the idea is to facilitate uh, that students develop the following skills, and that skills are access complex and abstract concepts of a subject in a more accessible way, uh, learn through creating themselves instead of passively consuming informations, learn more about how uh, cooperation simplifies learning new skills give and receive formative feedback, 
and you know that uh, we use uh, all of these uh, skills in our MOOCs uh, with the purpose of increasing their uh, metacognition and present their knowledge with the intention to teach their classmates. Uh, please, Alexandra, next. Thank you. Um, how can you activate your students using silent videos? Uh, when they use their digital devices and working to together, they are active instantly. And then you make them core of the learning process. And there are three examples how you can use silent videos. You can use them uh, throughout the course. You can use them uh, at the end of the course. And of course, but not the least and not the worst uh, way is to record your own voice to silent video. If you use the silent video throughout the course, uh, you need to make sure your, your students have access to silent video on their devices. And you need to ask your students to work together in pairs or groups during one lesson. And then they need to look at the video and try to understand why, uh, what is that what they see. Uh, they need to use course book, uh, online materials or something that is provided by the teacher and write a script fitting the video. After they uh, did that, they need to record the script uh, onto the video using their own voices, declare the source used for the information presented in the credits and send the finished product to you. And they are actively, 100% actively. Um, at the end of the course, uh, you can ask your students to create a new script for new silent video because this one before they used through the lectures uh, and then you can ask them uh, to discuss differences between the first and the second video or you can try uh, ask them to uh, discuss uh, the first and second video between the groups and this is very very interesting and uh, the main problem is that the teachers do not know how to make silent videos. So I have put here one video that is tutorial and I am also Mie, Microsoft Innovative e uh, Education Experts. So I have access to platform uh, where I uh, took this video. Alexander, please, can you run it for me? Thank you. If it is in the next slide, Maria, maybe you can take control and do it yourself. Alexandra, yes, okay. Maybe okay, it's not okay. listening at the moment. Can you see the take control uh, button on your yes, screen? Yes, I have. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, someone took my control. Is it Alexandra or? No, is it not me, unfortunately, but we can. Oh, try. Uh, yes, if you can just turn back the, I don't need the video uh, no more, but if you can turn back the slide where video was. Yes. Thank you. Just give me a second. Yes, yes, okay, no problem. Uh, before that, 
please. I will say only one word too uh, about the use of uh, uh, silent video at the end of the course. It is the same uh, uh, same procedure, but you need to carry out your lesson, uh, your teaching of the uh, of the course as planned, and after that you give your students silent video, and then they record their. Uh, their words or scenario uh, on that video. And of course, you can record your own voice to silent video. Uh, in that way, uh, video uh, can uh, use you as the foundation for uh, produ producing your own educational material. Uh, you can share that educational material with your students, and then you can work uh, with them in the flip flipped classroom approach or uh, watching during classroom classroom lectures or um, it can be a retention tool available when uh, when it suits the students or yourself. OK, next slide. Uh, these last two slides are videos. This one is a video without sound or, or uh, without voice. Only, only music, and on the second slide, there is a narration, and that is what you expect from your students. Okay, this is not the work of students, but uh, it can, uh, uh, you, in in this way, you can see uh, what you can expect from them. Okay, Alexandra, please, thank you. Can you run video for me? Is it playing, uh, Maria? Because no, I can. I see. don't see it playing, so I don't know what is what's happening with others, but I cannot see it playing. For me, it's only an airplane. Okay, can someone else help us? Maybe can you see the video or can you hear the sound properly? No, we just uh, see the slide. Uh, uh, you can see only airplane. Yes, only the airplane. And Maybe video. you can put yes. the link if there is a link in the chat. I see the video and we can sound. see the video. On, mm, yeah, so okay. some people can see it playing and they can hear the sound, but some others not. Okay, uh, it is important. I will uh, I will finish, Alexandra. Uh, it is important in these last two uh, slides, you can see one video without uh, voice. And in the second slide, you can see uh, the video with the voice and with the music. And that is very in inspiring to, to, to students. Thank you very much. I, I hope Thank that you, this Maria. was motivating for others to try in their classrooms. Indeed, it was very motivating. I think it's very inspiring for the rest. And uh, I would kindly like to remind participants that the presentation, as well as the recording, will be available on the live events page of the platform. So please, you can um, check the video and the sound uh, there uh, in case it was not working for you uh, this afternoon. So without further delay, and as we are running out of time, I would quickly like to go to our uh, next um, uh, next participant, next speaker, who is Patricia Roma, and she's going to present us tools for active learning. Patricia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, I think I can take control of the presentation if you agree. Exactly, yes. You can uh, go further than Christina's presentation till yeah. you find your material. Great, thank you. That's me. No, <laughs> too far. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I teach English at a Technical High School uh, in the center of Italy, and uh, I am also an eTwinner and an eTwinning ambassador. I don't know if you uh, know what eTwinning is. It's the uh, European community of schools and teachers. Uh, we have registered 1 million users recently, and I strongly recommend if you haven't joined it yet to do it because there you can find a lot of inspiration for keeping on the, <laughs> the good work of this MOOC. Uh, today I wanted to present you a tool which I found very useful. It's a, a, an application called Nearpod. It can be a mobile app or a web app and it allows you to create interactive lessons which embed uh, lots of different types of activities in, in the presentation. For example, so this is the symbol of the application and uh, you can create presentations which uh, in, engage the students in lots of different activities. 
and they can participate using their devices with their smartphones or tablets, no matter what kind of operating system they have. And uh, it's uh, uh, useful the fact that the teacher can control the progression of slides or the students can go through them in an uh, independent way. Once you log in, once you access your dashboard, you have lots of different functions. You can go to my library where you can find all your uh, created presentations, or if you want, you can go to the store and find uh, already ready-made presentations on lots of different topics, from scientific to uh, literary ones. Uh, which are uh, made by the authors of the applications, but uh, you can also edit these uh, uh, presentations and uh, some are free, some are uh, under payment. You can join presentations uh, created by other people or cre create your ones, your own one, and uh, you can also access to a section which is the report section where you can have all your data stored the, about the presentations that you are ready produced. So for example, if you start to uh, uh, create a new presentation, you have a lot of uh, um, different opportunities about content and activities that you can in incorporate in your presentation. And the very good important thing is that uh, you can use uh, uh, PowerPoint slides or uh, ready-made slides that you are ready, Google slides, for example, that you already have, you can upload them in the presentation and you can put in the middle of these slides, you can put lots, lots of different interactive activities. So you can see, you can incorporate audio, videos, files, quizzes, polls, even field trips, simulations, links to web pages and games, uh, drawings. So from one slide uh, to the other, students can really have a great amount of interaction, collective boards, open questions, polls. So the presentations that you, the content that you deliver uh, great, gives the students a great uh, um, opportunity to be active and uh, say their own uh, opinions and uh, participate uh, to a great extent in your lesson. So the, the tool can be incorporated in lots of different learning scenarios. Of course, it's just a tool, but a tool which gives you um, the opportunity to make your student active during uh, class time. And uh, once you are finished, uh, once you have uh, completed the presentation, you have uh, immediate feedback because all uh, the results is stored in the report section, which I showed you before. And the feedback is immediate. The results can be seen in the form of graphs or uh, for, uh, let's say, an overall view of uh, how the, the topic was uh, uh, understood by the students, if they had problems in some parts of it or not. So in general, in, you have a general summary, but you have also a detailed report for every individual student, for every individual section of your presentation, or for every individual quiz or question or activity. And for example, here you can see in this slide that uh, I took some screenshot of an overall report, the questions report. I also took a screenshot of uh, um, collaborative brainstorming activity. So lots, lots of varieties, uh, variety and uh, and involvement engagement. And the one uh, last thing that I uh, wrote in my slide is that you can use this uh, even in e training projects, so project of collaboration with other schools online, uh, because once you have launched your presentation, there is a, a code that you can share with the, the users and everybody can join from uh, another country, from home, uh, uh, from another class in the school, uh, so everybody can participate even if they are not present in the classroom. And so I think that's, that's all. Yes, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Patricia, for sharing with us this, uh, this tool for active learning. I think that the participants will benefit from it as well. Thank you very much for your contribution. Um, after Patricia's uh, uh, 
presentation we have reached the um, the ending of this uh, teach meet but there is still some time for our participants to raise some questions if they have for the speakers please uh, there is still some minutes that we can use them for questions i believe that our speakers raised very inspiring topics they gave us uh, their ideas examples tools that they are using for active learning so if you uh, if you want some more details please uh, take advantage and uh, raise your questions. I see here on the chat that we have a, a question about uh, Maria. And uh, Opatova is uh, asking um, about the videos. Where do you take the videos, Maria, from? The ones you inserted into the PowerPoint, if you could uh, please. OK, yes. OK. Uh, the video that was in PowerPoint, I used uh, from uh, Scientix. I'm also Scientix ambassador, so um, I had the opportunity to participate in project of Airbus Foundation, and I have implemented that project with my in my class classroom with my students and I a little bit modified it. So I took out the uh, voice and put only music and uh, put them in front of put that video in front of my students. And I also had uh, 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 something in my backpack, what I say, and that is full video with the uh, speaker on it and it is from uh, Airbus Foundation but when I uh, search for videos I look on YouTube and I take safe from net I put it on my computer and then I uh, rearrange them in application of photography uh, remove video or remove a voice or something like that what I need add music and that's that's what I do from the internet most okay <laughs> very useful thank you Maria. thank you for question i'm just going through the chat to see if we have any other question i don't know if you have found something on the chat sonia that we can uh, uh we can bring up to the speakers but i mostly see very positive feedback from the participants thank you very inspiring thank you for joining this event Excellent. There, uh, I would also like to give you the opportunity uh, before we close this event very quickly, because I know that the peer assessment has been a bit challenging for some of you. Uh, if you have any specific question regarding the course, please also uh, take the opportunity to ask me and my colleagues. So I see, thank you, Sonia, for uh, mentioning this question. I see we have uh, one question for the for the course. Is it compulsory to do the learning scenario with the Novigado scenario tool? Yes, Tabea from Spain, it is compulsory to use the online scenario tool um, and, um, and use this, uh, this format, this structure, and this template that the online scenario tool provides. If you are facing any issue with that, you can always refer to the scenario uh, tool support email address and we will try to assist you as soon as possible. I saw also that we have many participants with um, issues not uh, being able to uh, to connect or to, or to reconnect uh, in the online scenario tool. For that, we recommend you uh, create um, a new uh, email address, a new account with a new email address so that you are not having any issues with prior accounts. If the issue uh, persists, please uh, always refer to the scenar uh, scenario support email address. I will also show you the email address that I provided at the beginning. Just give me a second. Yeah, here it is. You can refer to this uh, email address. So if we don't have any other questions, I will have to finish this event. First of all, I would like to, uh, yes, one last maybe. Yes, Sonia, for sure. Um, let me see. But 
Patricia. Uh, I think you can take this question uh, if you're still with us. How can be a collaboration activity with Nearpod uh, with the tool you showed us for active learning? How can you organize a collaboration activity with this tool? Well, um, a collaboration activity can be done with the brainstorming, with the um, team, uh, for example, team building and uh, participating to the quizzes. Or there is also the opportunity to uh, use uh, um, Flipgrid as a, a video tool and uh, students could collaborate in uh, supporting, uh, sorry, providing uh, um, their feedback. So you have to explore because it depends on uh, what you are uh, teaching at the moment, what you want your students to concentrate on at the moment and finding uh, the best uh, solution. But in any case, it's a tool and not a learning scenario, that's I wanted to point out. That helps a lot, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for the answer. We have one more question from Marina. Is it necessary to use online tools in the script? Are you referring to the script of the online scenario, Marina? If yes, then you should uh, refer to the resources that you are going to use, yes. I hope that this answers your question. Tools that we use with children, yes, for sure you can uh, refer to them as they will also be useful for your reviewers in order to get gain a more clear idea on which tools you're using. This will give them a, a clear idea and they will review your learning scenario, knowing exactly what you use with your students. Is that clear, Marina? OK, thanks. Great. Daira is having a question. Uh, can we log in again in a few weeks and get new or more feedback or now learning scenario? Well, uh, in a few weeks, the course finishes on the 23rd of February. Daira, as you probably already know, so the feedback that you should receive should be by that date, the 23rd of February. After that, you can still use the online scenario tool, but you won't be provided with feedback from the course participants. I hope that uh, this makes sense. Excellent. Thank you, Daira, for your question. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, our speakers, uh, the eight inspiring teachers who were willing to share their ideas, their methods and their example, examples with us today. Thank you very much for your time and contribution to this event. I, I hope your, our participants got very inspired by you. Uh, thanks. Thank you very, very much. I would also like to thank my colleague Sonia, who was supporting me backstage today. I would also like to thank all the participants who joined us today for this event. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I hope, uh, I wish you good luck with the rest of the course. I would like also to send my warmest congratulations to those who have already finished the course. And from the Novigado, uh, the Novigado Partners and the European School and Academy, I would like to wish you a very pleasant evening. Thank you all for being here with us today and good luck with the rest of the world. Thank you very much. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye, Alexandra. Thank you.